Well, the UN and the US have expressed concern over violent clashes in Jerusalem al Quds sparked by Israel's attacks on Al Aqsa Mosque and its planned eviction of Palestinian families. A UN spokesman quoted the Secretary General as saying that Israel must exercise maximum restraint and respect the right to freedom of peaceful assembly. Antonio Guterres also urged Israel to cease demolitions and evictions. The U.S. National Security Advisor also held talks with a top Israeli official and urged Tel Aviv to pursue appropriate measures to ensure calm. Jake Sullivan said the U.S. is concerned about the potential evictions of Palestinian families, but he failed to denounce the move. Israel's plan for raising homes in an Al-Quds neighborhood to make way for settler units has increased tensions. The truth is... Let's try to give you some insight into that story with the help of Mr. Tim Anderson. He's the director for the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, who comes to you live via Skype out of Sydney, Australia. Sir, it's good to have you with us. Uh, three different stories I read once about children and then about you know, re recent skirmishes and now uh, the uh, UN and uh, the U.S. reaction to what's going on. Um, what's your, are, what is your thought on, on what's been happening? Well, if we look at the short term, it's a horror story. It's uh, people being brutalized, um, the ethnically cleansed, their houses being destroyed stormtroopers going into the Al-Aqsa Mosque and so on. But if we step back a little bit and look at the big picture, what's happening here is really a 73-year-old game where the sponsors of Israel, which is now widely uh, condemned as an apartheid state, are expressing concern. But they've expressed concern and they've expressed, uh, in theory, the idea of a parallel Arab state alongside a Jewish state for 73 years. They haven't moved on that at all. And in the meantime, uh, Israel believes it has the green light from the US, from Britain, from France, its principal sponsors, to go ahead with uh, stealing more and more land. And uh, of course, destroying any possibility of a two-state solution. And this is something that the, the more uh, thoughtful Israeli leaders have realized is a danger for them. And this is the crunch. The crunch is that the more that Israel steals Palestinian land, with the populations about equal, that is to say there's about 6.8 Palestinian Arabs, about 6.8 million uh, Israeli Jews there, uh, the more it becomes very obvious that this is an apartheid state and half the population does not, don't have citizens' rights. And then, of course, what they fear most really is that an anti-apartheid campaign, once that's widely recognized, um, will destroy any chances that Israel has of legitimacy. So in the long term, these contradictions are coming together and it doesn't look very good for the Israeli colony. Mr. Anderson, uh, I wonder uh, what good uh, hmm, can it do uh, when the U.S. says it is concerned but fails to condemn what Israel is doing? Well, this is what it's, the U.S. has said for decades. It's like a it's like a dog whistle game. They're saying uh, they say undercover to the Israeli friends, we have to do this, you know, for international reasons. But just keep doing what you're doing, and we will keep funding you. We'll keep providing the weapons for you. We'll provide the four billion dollars a year, whatever it is, for you to keep doing what you're doing. So it's been going on for more than seven decades, uh, and so that's why I'm saying the Palestinian cause has been rising in legitimacy internationally. Most importantly, the resistance in Palestine is still there. People are putting their bodies on the line to resist, but more importantly, they're staying on their land. They're not going away. And it's becoming very obvious, and I think from an international point of view, we have to make this more and more obvious that this is an apartheid state where you have half the population who do not have citizenship rights. And that, in international law, is a crime against humanity. And the international community has a responsibility to dismantle an apartheid state. And we saw this all in the 80s with South Africa. And it's a very strong parallel to what's going on now in occupied Palestine. Uh, uh, sir, there is another thing, you know, this UN reaction. How do you evaluate that? You know, it has said that it is concerned, uh, but again, failed to um, condemn it in any way, you know. And then there is the issue of these children, unfortunately, you know, when grown-ups are targeted, you know, it's painful enough. But when you have children, uh, I think, you know, more needs to be done, even by the, at the level of the UN and some other international 
uh, you know, agencies and bodies, if not the U.S., like you said, you know, because, you know, it, it won't do that and it's obvious. Yes, that's right. Well, at the U.N. level, remember, the U.N. is a creature of its member states and the Security Council is paralyzed because all of the wars in West Asia, the Middle East, are being driven by three of the five permanent members there. So the Security Council is effectively um, not um, competent to deal with this situation. But at another level, we have, of course, the International Criminal Court, which has started to move into the territory. We have UNESCO, we have the human rights bodies, which are, of course, dominated by the, the broader membership of the UN, the General Assembly. So there is indeed room for some of those agencies to play a role in, on the one hand, providing support for Palestinian people, on the other hand, um, raising the flag of the, the illegitimacy of this apartheid state. So there is still some capacity at the UN there, but it depends on the UN members. And of course, let's remember, the UN membership has changed a lot since 1948, since 73 years ago when the charade first began. Many, many thanks, Mr. Tim Anderson, director for the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies out of Sydney via Skype. I appreciate your time, sir.